Hey, Bart Miller here with Cycling Strong. So I am getting curious about doing a crit. Now I've never done a crit in my life, but I know a guy that's really good at them. And so I wanted to pick his brain while he was here with me a little bit about crits because I don't know if you've ever done one or not, but let me be honest with you because we're friends. Crits scare the bejesus out of me. And that means they scare me a lot. And they scare me for a couple of reasons. One is because I feel like now versus four years ago, I'm a lot better bike handler. I've started mountain biking. I feel like I'm, 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 I feel a little more confident on the bike. But what scares me is the guy who's not, that's in there, um, some of those kind of things. So Cameron is really, in my opinion, a, a phenomenal crit racer. Obviously, if you watch him, um, and if you don't watch him, follow him on Facebook or follow Endurance 360, whatever you want. He sends out some really good newsletters. Besides my channel, make sure you get involved with his. But what I'm saying is, help me to get comfortable with crits. To help me how I should practice for a crit. Is there a way that you could set up a mini course that I, I just go practice on before I get there? Give me some ideas or how do I do it? Tell me, Cameron, how, how do I work into yeah, crits? So rumor has it that yeah. crits are dangerous. I got that rumor. Right? So everybody sees this group and carving through turns and, and high speed through turns and your tight knit group. And in my mind, it's no different or any dangerous than a road race where you're going through a road and you're going, you're taking a turn in a road. No different. Difference is it's just a shorter event and it might be more intense in the amount of energy you're putting out in a short period of time. So in order to kind of prepare for a criterium, you know, you can get out on, on a closed course and maybe a, a, a closed parking lot, dive into some turns, kind of get a feel for your bike and how well you can handle into those turns. When it comes to criterium racing, it's all about not crossing that wheel in front of you. If you're crossing that wheel and this, the guy in front of you does some abrupt movement, you run the risk of falling down. But if you stay off of that rear wheel and allow that guy to have some movement in front of you, you're going to be just fine. So that's the key is don't overlap their rear wheel. Hmm. That's the first key. Now, you know, there's a lot of different tactics and strategy that's going on in the criterium. Uh, most guys are very energetic in the first half of the race. Second half though, they're a little bit worn down. That might be a time to pounce oftentimes in the lower category. So what's great about criterium racing, I guess racing in general, is there's different categories for every age group. Uh, the master's category start at 35 years old. And then about every 10 year increments, you've got another group that you can join in. Nice part about that is you'll be racing with guys that are kind of in the same boat that you are. Mm. You've got, you know, a job and, and work and family and, you know, whatever else you've got going on in your life. You've got reasons to wake up the next day. Right. And so do they. Some of the other, you know, younger categories, you know, it could get a little dicier. So I would recommend picking, if you're going to start off in a criterium, find that category that, that, that you fall in your age group. Start there. And then maybe work over on the the the, uh, the other categories, the numbered categories, the fives, the fours, the threes, the twos, and work up from there. So don't overlap wheels. Find how, how you're familiar and your, your bike handling skills and turns are. Remember, when cornering, you want to corner one or the other. You want to corner your bike down first or your body, not both. If you're cornering both, you're a little bit off balance and if you hit something maybe a rut in the road or a bump or um, maybe even some sand or rocks if you're off balance you're down but if you're one or the other you've got a much better chance of staying upright no problem Is that all we got to think about that's it stay upright would you suggest down. if i'm going to do one um that i would maybe go do my first one do a low key one and stay in the back of the pack and just kind of get used to it or would you get yourself right in the heat of it uh, you certainly can you can stay near the back to kind of get a feel of the flow because there is a little bit of a different flow in a criterium 
Um, there's a lot of surging though. You want to watch in the criterion, you've got, let's say it's a four corner, kind of a square or rectangle course. When there's a lot of turns though, it can cause an accordion effect where everybody's kind of taking a, opening up a gap. If it's a, a wheel length or a bike length or two bike lengths, and let's say there's 30 guys in your race and all 30 guys are opening up a gap of one bike length, well, the guy in the very back has to make up 30 bike lengths in order to kind of regroup. Right. So it can really hurt those guys in the back, that accordion effect. Staying near the front, you don't have the accordion effect that you, that's going to affect you as much. Okay. So <clears throat> keep out there, keep in mind on a criterium that it also really takes you out and it puts you into VO2 max. So the reason that I'm liking it right now and being interested in it is, is that in a training process, you need those VO2 efforts. And it does that for you and it really pushes you there. And it does it with a group, which is what I like. So criteriums are great for that and Cameron brought that up. That's why you're going so hard. Um, so I wanted to bring him in. I think some other things you can do is you could get like pre-ride the course when you get there. Mm -hmm. Get some guys, some experts like Cameron to go out there and say, you know what, look, this is something to be aware of when you're not, because you don't know what you don't know. And these guys, they know what they're looking for before, you know, when they go ride the course one time, they instantly go, oh, well, this is a problem. This is where it's gonna accordion. This is a sprint section. They've kind of got that in their mind. So what I would suggest is, like I'm doing right now, interviewing Cameron on this before I go do it, you know, maybe when you get there, see if there's an advanced rider there that would say, hey, would you ride the course with me and kind of tell me what I should be looking at and what kind of speeds I'm going to be hitting this at. And if he says, you're going to be hitting this probably at this kind of a speed, I would once again suggest get your bike up to that speed, come in, ride that corner a couple times so that you go, yeah, yeah, I get that. Or, you know, maybe I ought to back out of this and, uh, try it next time even though I paid my entry fee. I, I don't know. Well, sure. Some turns or let's say a, any given course, you're going to want to ride the course in advance to look at the, the ruts and the potholes and, and how the, the road curves, you know, how you may have to adjust your positioning as you're going through a turn. Um, how far from the last turn is the, is the finish line? Right. Sometimes it might be a sprint to the last turn, not necessarily the finish line. And so you want to kind of assess where, how that course is going to kind of dictate how the, the group rides that course. Uh, it does help to maybe have someone that's been on the course, competed on the course before to give you a, a little bit of insight. And that yeah. helps out a lot. Uh, but if you're struggling with, you know, that confidence, it's okay. Be on the back, get a feel of the flow. Yeah and work your way up as you feel more comfortable. Yeah. You don't necessarily have to win your first criterium. Mm -mm. So, you know, I mean, get out there, don't, uh, don't try to kill yourself and maybe get the feel of it. And I'm saying that for my own best interest, not for yours, because uh, my ego gets involved just as much as anybody else's. And so I get there, I get antsy, but uh, it is okay to get out there and practice and try some stuff. So um, now one other really quick question on that. Is there a certain tire difference? Do you need two sets of rims? I see people show up with that. I mean, let's just briefly talk me through that. Sure. So part of USA Cycling rules on criteriums is there, there's a free lap on a mechanical issue. So a mechanical issue would be something that's out of your control. Uh, if you get a flat tire, that's out of your control. And you can circle back to the finish area where, let's say you've got a spare set of wheels you've, got to, you've placed on the side, you can grab your the wheel you need to exchange, exchange it out, wait for the official to give you the green light to regroup back into the, the pack. That's nice. Uh, something that is not a mechanical is, let's say your brake cable comes loose and you can't brake with the rear brake. Well, that's not a mechanical issue, that's a mechanic issue. And that's something that would be considered in your control there's no free lap for, for that one. Gotcha. So there is a free lap. Usually that is up to five laps to go. Depending on the course, some courses are longer, some are shorter, but five laps is a pretty good general rule. Cool. All right, well, anyway, I just wanted to give you a really quick little thing, some things to think about. I think the best piece of advice that we got today was don't overlap wheels in a criterium. 
When you get into your corners, make sure you do one, either lean the bike first or lean your body first, then do the other so that you're really solid in what you're trying to do. And the third thing is go look at the course, make sure you understand it in your mind, you've been through it before you actually race it. So anyway, thanks Cameron for your time and appreciate that and that. Um, if you haven't got Endurance 360, Cameron's got an amazing product out there. Go to endurance360.com, grab that. But most of all, keep out there, keep cycling strong and be safe.